When I was very young, my parents got divorced because of their personalities. It was a very heavy blow for me, and I felt confused and lonely. I started to become introverted and not good at expressing my feelings and emotions. I often thought that if marriage would be so hard for people, then I would rather not get married. As I got older, many couples around me had conflicts and problems. I feel that marriage is a very complicated relationship that requires a lot of energy and time to manage. I was afraid that I would not be able to handle such pressure and challenges. However, everything changed when I met my husband. He is a very wonderful person. He was able to give me a lot of security, which made me feel that I could trust him and share my life with him. We began to get to know each other and gradually developed a deep relationship. Eventually, I decided to marry him at the age of 36. Although we have had our share of problems and challenges, we have always been able to overcome them together. I am very glad that I made this decision and I feel that I have found true happiness. A year after we got married, I got pregnant. My husband and I were overwhelmed with excitement and happiness because it meant we were about to have a child of our own. My family was just as excited, and everyone was excited and anticipating the arrival of a new baby. However, when labor started, everything became extremely difficult. My cervix did not dilate properly, causing me severe pain. I felt like my body was reaching its limits. Despite the doctor's efforts to help me, the situation did not improve. As time passed, I began to feel unconscious and it seemed that I could no longer bear the pain and suffering. In this situation, the doctors kept taking steps to hopefully relieve my pain. During this difficult labor, I was in a constant state of panic. I didn't know what was going to happen next. Suddenly, I emerged into a darkness. I felt like my heart was stopping. I started to feel panic because it meant that my life was slowly disappearing. Even though I was in darkness, I could still feel the weakness and helplessness of my body. I could only listen to my fate. I didn't know what would happen next, but I hoped I could continue to live. I heard the last words the doctor uttered, her heart had stopped. I was floating in that dark space, without direction or purpose. Suddenly, in front of me, a door appeared. The outline of this door was clearly visible, and it was slowly opening. A dazzling light was emanating from the door. I felt that the whole space was illuminated, as if all the darkness had dissipated. The light made me feel very comfortable and warm, as if it was welcoming me. I could feel the energy from the light, which was constantly healing me. I felt a great relaxation and relief for my spirit. I did not hesitate to walk through that door. When I entered that door, I saw a beautiful garden. The garden was filled with flowers of various colors, and a faint white light shone around the petals of each flower. The atmosphere in the garden was very warm and inviting. There are many varieties of flowers here that I have never seen before, let alone know how to describe them. The fragrance of the flowers filled the air. The sky was a color I had never seen before, it was so clear that it seemed to penetrate everything. A person suddenly appeared in front of me. As I gazed at the person, I realized that the face was very familiar. It was my aunt. She had passed away ten years ago. But here she was even more beautiful than I remembered. My aunt looked at me with a smile. I also saw the rest of my family. My great-grandfather died before I was born, but I know it was him. I could feel his love and attention. Their presence made me feel very warm. When I turned around, the sight in front of me was very shocking and unexpected. I saw my deceased mother, 
who left when I was 17 years old. I have always missed her, especially when I was facing difficulties and challenges. My mother took care of me after my divorce and we spent many memorable times together. It was only after her death that I lived with my father. I was a rebellious teenager at the time. And my mother and I were always arguing over petty things. On the day she died, we had a heated argument over a study issue. At that time I was in my rebellious stage and always felt that my mother could not understand my heart. During that argument, I said to her, I hate you, and I said a lot of things that hurt her. In the evening, I quietly packed my bags and secretly left home. The next morning, my father reached out to my teacher. My father told me that my mother had died in a car accident. I couldn't accept the news at that time and couldn't forgive myself for what I had said to my mother. I later learned that my mother found out that I was not at home shortly after I left. She drove around outside looking for me. But on the way, she was involved in a serious car accident. When I recall that moment of grief, I still can't calm down. I said so many hurtful things to my mother when I got into an argument with her. Now I know it was the stupidest thing I ever did. My mother left so suddenly, and I never thought she would leave me. I didn't have a chance to apologize to her and let her know that I really loved her. This incident made me feel guilty and lost. Whenever I think of the argument I had with my mother that night, I feel very regretful. Later, my father always reassured me that it was not my fault. But I knew I could never truly forgive myself because I hadn't had the chance to apologize to my mother or tell her how much I loved her. Now that she was standing right in front of me, I couldn't believe my eyes. Was this real? Or am I having a dream? My mother smiled, reached out and stroked my hair and said, this is real, my daughter. We talked about the day she died and I kept apologizing to her. Because I had been feeling so guilty. My mother reassured me and said, no, it's not your fault. It's just that my time has come and I have to leave. Hearing these words made my heart feel very heavy. Mom took me in her arms and gave me a warm hug just like she did when I was a child. I felt myself surrounded by a strong force that made me feel very warm. At this moment, I felt that the heavy burden inside me was soothed. Here, I couldn't feel the presence of time and we continued to talk. I asked my mom if she was angry with me for something I had done before. She replied, No, those things don't make any sense here. She finally told me that she would be here for me, but that I had to go back now, because my time was not up yet. I told her that I didn't want to go back, and that I wanted to stay here with her. She gently patted my hand. Then told me that my mission was not yet complete and that I needed to return to Earth to continue my journey. I would have a healthy son, a child who would need my company. Then my mother reminded me that her marriage to my father had been a failure, and she knew the damage it had done to me. But she still wanted me to find my own happiness. She gave me some advice about marriage. She told me that I must trust each other in marriage and be more tolerant. Don't be like her and my father, who were suspicious and hurtful to each other. I was grateful for my mother's advice and promised to work hard on my marriage. After I hugged the other relatives goodbye, I curiously asked my mother how I should go back. My mother gently told me that she would drive me back. As we walked in the garden, we talked about many things from my childhood. I remembered a funny thing. At that time, I was about eight years old. My mother made me wash my hands, and I accidentally dropped the soap in the toilet. I was afraid of being blamed, so I threw the soap box into the toilet too, 
hoping to cover up my fault. As a result, the whole toilet bowl was clogged. My mother and I both laughed out loud. Soon we came to the front of the door. I slowly walked toward the door, feeling an inexplicable wave of sadness well up inside me. My mother stood beside me and hugged me tightly. Her eyes were full of love as we parted. She told me that whenever I needed her, I could think of her and that she would always be there for me. I assured her that I would live a good life. Finally, my mother kissed my forehead and gently patted my shoulder. Then, I walked through the door. My mother slowly disappeared from my sight. When my soul returned to the hospital, I saw myself lying on a hospital bed. There were several doctors and nurses standing around. They were performing a cesarean section on me. At this point, I began to feel scared because I didn't know how to get back into my body. I began to look for a way to reunite my soul with my body, but everything was very difficult. I closed my eyes and started praying to God. I hoped that God would help me, my son still needed me. My prayers were answered by God. I felt my soul return to my body. At first, my body felt a little heavy, but it soon adjusted. When I opened my eyes, it was noon the next day. My family was very happy to see me wake up. I noticed my husband hiding next to me, secretly wiping tears from his eyes. This made me feel warm because it was the first time I had seen him shed tears. I asked him what had happened. He told me that I had lost so much blood during the delivery that there was a time when my heart stopped beating. When I saw my son for the first time, I was so excited. He was lying quietly in his crib and looked so cute. I gently approached him and tried to touch his face. His skin was so tender. His hair was very soft, like sheep's wool. His eyes were tightly closed and his little nose was slightly wrinkled, as if he was dreaming. I looked at him and kept weeping. At this moment, I felt very happy. Now I am sitting quietly in the living room, looking out the window, and I can't help but feel how fast time flies. In ten days, it will be my son's 18th birthday. Looking back on the process from his birth to now, my heart is full of emotions. He is a very obedient child and very kind, always willing to help others. I feel very happy and proud to see him grow up. However, I often think of my mom, who was a very important person in my life. Although she passed away a long time ago, I still feel that she is by my side, always watching over me and my family in silence. I know that she has been waiting for me and that we will be together again in heaven. I will return to her someday in the future. This makes me feel very warm and comforting and makes me appreciate every day in front of me even more 